So a very natural question is that if we have this interpretation for a vector valued function, what is the interpretation for this? And for that we just have to start drawing pictures. So let's start drawing pictures. Let me erase that and make, give, pick a nicer curve and then talk about what u prime of alpha might represent. We'll conclude that it's the tangent. Okay, let me talk while I'm drawing it. Here is our curve that corresponds to u vector of alpha. Here is an arbitrary value of the parameter alpha and here's the vector corresponding to it. In this interpretation, in this setting, u of alpha is actually called the position vector. Well, that's how we're interpreting the function u of alpha. Position vector. Also known as the radius vector. Okay, you kind of see why it's called the radius vector? Because all of these guys radiate from the single point. It's also called a radius vector. So here I chose a particular value of the parameter and here is the vector u that corresponds to it. I will now choose a nearby parameter. Well, I don't know how nearby that is. And I will call this u of alpha plus h. We will now have to evaluate this denominator, <laughs> numerator. We should welcome algebra with vectors because we know exactly what to do. It is this vector right here. And then we'll divide it by h. Let's assume that in this case, this corresponds to h equals 1. I will take h equals 1 half and then 1 tenth in just a moment. So right now we just have to divide by 1. So we have this value right here. By this value, I mean this vector. So yes, it actually lives here when we're doing vector algebra, but it's so much more convenient to draw it here. Great, this is h equals 1. Now let's take h equals 1 half and kind of start seeing what happens. h equals 1 half, I guess it might land us over here. Because I'm not saying that alpha is a uniform parameter, right? So alpha equals 1 half could be here, could be, could be anywhere in between. Okay, I will once again find this difference right here. Here it is, okay, and now I have to divide by one half, which means that it'll end up being this vector right here. So that's what we're looking at right here. Next, I need a different color. I will take h equals one tenth. So we're right there when h equals one tenth. So we're roughly, remember when you are, when you try to intuit calculus, you have to assume that you've already picked things so small or small enough that things are roughly linear. So when, if we think of this as small, then when h is one tenth, right, then this difference is about ten times smaller than the original vector, about. I'm not trying to make a super rigorous argument. I'm trying to appeal to your intuition on what will happen. Okay, so, so we're right there. So the difference will be, I don't even know where to draw it, this little vector right here. And then I have to divide by one tenth. So it'll be ten times longer. So do you see what it's becoming? It's becoming the tangential vector. In fact, based on this intuition, we'll define tangent to be this derivative. It will be by definition that this vector right here is the, gives you the tangential direction. Now there are lots of things to prove because an interesting thing happened. We started with a function. It gave us a curve. And now we're saying that some algebraic or analytic property of the function is, tell us some, is telling us something about the curve. Well, we have to be very careful here and we'll dot all of these i's. These are very important i's to dot and t's to cross. 
But you might ask, well, what if, if we're talking about a curve, then we could have chosen many different parameters. Not many different parameters, many different parameterizations. One would go like this, another one would define a parameter beta that's distributed differently. I want to take parameter that equals s, or maybe it corresponds to time, and this is the trajectory of a particle. And in each case, with all new sort, with all different parameterizations, I can still evaluate this derivative. Will it be the same direction, no matter what the parameterization is? Will it be the same direction? I can't define this to be the tangent if I'm not assured of the fact that the direction, well, the tangent direction, if I can't be assured that the direction does not depend on the parameter. It doesn't, but it's something to think about very carefully. So yes, this is getting closer and closer and closer, right, just because we keep drawing these chords. So this really corresponds to the construction of the tangent. And if you can imagine that, you know, as the parameter shrinks, as the parameter h becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, this vector becomes roughly smaller by the same factor. So when we divide by h, not only does this vector get closer and closer, so getting closer and closer to the tangent direction has nothing to do with dividing by h. But when we do divide by h, it just keeps, it seems like we keep restoring it to some reasonable value, to some reasonable length. And that's actually exactly what happens. Right? So not only does the direction eventually, eventually, again, I'm appealing to your intuition, not to your rig sense of rigor. Uh, not, event, not only does the direction eventually become the tangent direction, but the length pretty much stabilizes and becomes a certain length. And you intuitively know exactly what that length is. Because if you think, even if I'm writing alpha, if you think of it as time, and so you think of this curve as the trajection of some particle, then of course this derivative corresponds to speed, excuse me, velocity. And to Newton, to people before Newton, and to Newton, velocity, it was obvious obvious. In other words, it was a truth that he held self-evident, that the velocity is tangent to the trajectory. That if a body, he thought about it for a long time, but he thought that if something is flying this way, that at this point the velocity points this way, at this point the velocity points this way, at this point the velocity points this way. So for them, and for you it should be the same. Velocity was synonymous with tangent, tangential direction. It's a question of where do you start? What's your starting point? You have to come up with a definition and go from there. And your definition will never be, be pure or 100% satisfactory. It will always be uncertain and self-contradictory and anxiety-inducing. But you have to choose a reasonable starting point that's dictated strictly by your taste, your sense of taste and self-consistency, and go on from there. So for those guys, velocity was synonymous with the tangential direction. That was the definition. Okay, so I think I've convinced you, I hope, that this derivative, that if this corresponds to a nice curve, this corresponds to a tangential vector. And you know that if you were to reparameterize the whole thing, this guy will change in length, but not in direction. Because reparametrizing, God, it's hard to say that word, reparametrizing the curve means that your particle either moves faster through it or more slowly through it. So the magnitude of the velocity will very much depend on how fast it's moving. In other words, it'll depend on the parameterization. But the direction, the tangential direction, won't depend on it. 
Okay, so I hope I've convinced you. And another point that I would like to make, another one of those fundamental facts that will hopefully make this uh, more intuitive, and you look at it from a slightly different perspective, is to consider this truth, that no matter what the curve is, no matter what the curve is, if you choose any section of it, any point on it, and you just zoom in, for instance, let me choose this point right here. Ah, uh, what's a good one? This one right here. Can you see it? If I chose this point right here, and I zoomed in on it a little bit, it would look like this. If I zoomed in on it even more, it would look like this. And finally, if I zoomed in on it a lot, I'm not going to say all the way, it will look like this. That's just a fact that you have to learn to live with, not learn to live with, that you have to embrace. Because it's also one of those super fundamental assumptions, starting points in calculus, that you should just accept as the truth. That if you take a reasonable curve, no matter how curvy it is, within reason, and you zoom in on it, it'll end up being a straight, it'll end up looking straight. And the most interesting characteristic of this straight line is its slope. And so derivative, in terms of graphs, corresponds to that slope. And that makes it, if you accept the fact that all curves look straight if you zoom in, and are therefore characterized by that one number that's the slope, it makes it a lot easier to accept the concept of derivative. Because you'll say, okay, I want to know that slope. You know, I don't know how to define it just like I don't know how to define area. But I know what it means that the area of a circle is pi r squared without knowing what the area is by definition. One doesn't contradict the other. So yes, so this construction becomes even more convincing if we were to zoom in to that extent. Because when we zoom in to that extent, this curve, when we're zooming in on this, looks like a straight line. And here's our value of alpha, and so, oops, okay, so here it is, okay, and so here's where our u of alpha comes in, and here's u of alpha plus h, right here, straight line, right, and when you subtract this from this, it just points right along that straight line, and not only that, but when you zoom in enough, I should have mentioned that, if you zoom in far enough, not only does this become straight, but alpha also becomes a regular sort of thing. Doesn't correspond to length, no. But for equal steps in length, they become equal steps in alpha. That's the other side of the coin of accepting the fact that when you zoom in on a curve, it becomes a straight line. When you zoom in on a parameter, it becomes a regular parameter. And so when you find these differences, they all point along the line, great. So that proves the tangent portion of it. And because alpha is a regular parameter, when you keep, you know, when you cut h in half, this guy becomes cut in half, right? So when, at that zoom level, all of these expressions are basically some vector that points along that same straight line of a given length. At that zoom level, the value of h no longer matters. If you cut h in half, the top gets cut in half and the bottom gets cut in half because alpha becomes a regular parameter. Does that help with intuition a little bit more? So very helpful to think of that zoom.